in the same way that the amphibians were able to drag themselves out of the primitive oceans of this planet uh, into air and exist in a completely different dimension, we, whether grandly or perversely the verdict is not yet in, we dragged ourselves out of the sea of telepathic interconnected signification that united all life and we exist panting and pop-eyed in this other dimension called history, ego awareness, presence of self, sense of loss, anticipation of gain, all of these uh, dimensions of experience really have been added to what was previously the animal Tao, just the howling at the moon Tao of animal existence. And to this we have added, you know, a dimension of future anticipation, a dimension of regret, a dimension of how do I make choices, and so forth and so on. Um, there is not a... I don't put a, a moral uh, judgment on this, but it has to be said that in the tradition of the West, this has been viewed classically as the fall. This is the fall into names instead of realities, into uh, constructs of reality rather than reality itself. And this has now been uh, inculcated into each and every one of us as, you know, both the glory and the, and the trauma of human existence, which is our extraordinary ability to reside in and be in language. So, for instance, you know, I've made this example before. A child lying in a crib and a hummingbird comes into the room and the child is ecstatic because this shimmering iridescence of movement and sound and attention, it's just wonderful. I mean, it is an instantaneous miracle when placed against the background of the dull wallpaper of the nursery and so forth. But then mother or nanny or someone comes in and says, it's a bird, baby, bird, bird. And this takes this linguistic piece of mosaic tile and, oh, and places it over the miracle and glues it down with the epoxy of syntactical momentum. And from now on, the miracle is confined within the meaning of the word. And by the time a child is four or five or six, there no light shines through. They're, they have tiled over every aspect of reality with a linguistic association that blunts it, limits it, and confines it within cultural expectation. But this doesn't mean that this world of signification is not outside, still existent, beyond the horizons, the foreshortened horizons of a culturally validated language. Well, so then classically the path through this has been through use of psychedelic plants or uh, some form of ascetic practice or fasting or prayer and meditation, whatever, some way of breaking through. And it is literally presented as a breaking through, a penetration to another level, that culture is an imprisoning bubble of interlocking <laughs> assumptions that are like a, um, a collective hallucination. I mean, I hate to say it because it's a recursive metaphor, but culture is like a delusion of some sort because it isn't true, of course, it isn't true if you're uh, a wee toto. It isn't true that you came from the piss of the anaconda god when he had to get out of his canoe at the first waterfall. That's not really true, but that's your cultural myth and you live inside it. Our cultural myths 
that the world is made of things called mu mesons and antiprotons is of course not true either.